Income Tax 2022-2023, do you have to file? Let's do some wealth preservation with some income tax preparation. Most of this information comes from the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2022 filing requirements you can find at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. We're now asking the question, do you have to file? Before we dive in, note there is a difference between the question of do you have to file and the question of would it be beneficial if you were to file? In other words, you can imagine a scenario where you are not legally required to file but where you might still have a benefit, possibly be able to get a refund if you were to file. So you wanna make sure to have that distinction in mind when people ask you this type of question. So the general rule would be, if your income is below a certain threshold, you would think that the IRS would not be requiring you to file under an income tax type of system because it's likely that you're not. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Not going to owe any taxes everyone gets in essence a standard type of deduction if your taxable income is below the standard deduction you would think you might not owe any tax and therefore you would think that the irs would not be coming after you hunting you down or anything like that if you were not to file in a situation where you do not owe taxes but even in a situation where you don't owe taxes you might still have a benefit now it used to be that if your income was below a certain threshold, there might not be a lot of benefit unless you had withholdings, meaning you worked someplace, your income was below a certain threshold, you got W-2 income, and they withheld money from you, and you're, you would seek to get that back by filing, even if your income was low. But you might say, well, I only withheld like $20 of something, and I don't want to go through the hassle of filing the return to get that $20. But these days, uh, you have that scenario on top of the fact that you've got these refundable type of credits, which mean that even if your income goes below zero, you might still get a refund, or in that case, it would be like a benefit type of program uh, in that scenario. So even if you had a limited amount of income, you might be able to get access to credits such as the earned income tax credit and uh, the child tax credits. And the IRS often offers free uh, software online if your income is below a certain threshold. Therefore, I would think the general idea, the general strategy for most people, even if they're on the low income side of things, even if they think they may not be required to file, even if they don't think they're going to get much benefit, it might be worthwhile, I think it would be, to get access to the free software if you can and run a projection. Check it out. Uh, and that would be the general strategy I would recommend if asked these questions. So if you're asked the question, does someone have to file, distinguish between the question of having to file and the possible benefit of filing, even if not required to do so. And then I would stress the resources that are there to help people to kind of double check to see if it would be beneficial to file. So you can use chart A, B, or C to see if you must file a return. U.S. citizens who lived in or had income from a U.S. possession should see publication 570. Residents of Puerto Rico can use tax topic 901 to see if they must file. Here's the charts, so I won't go into them in a lot of detail, but let's just go over kind of a recap. So if your filing status is single, and then you've got your chart. This is how the charts often work. So you've got the label up top. If your filing status is, and at the end of 2022, you were under 65, uh, 65 or older, then file a return if your gross income was at least 12,950, uh, 14,700. So notice they're basically lining up to kind of like the standard deduction, right? That would be what you would generally think because if your income is below the standard deduction, you're not going to owe any tax. That doesn't mean that you might not get any benefit because you might have had withholdings. 
and, 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 and you might be subject to these other kind of refundable credits. So married filing joint. So if you're under 65, both spouses, then, uh, th then file a return if your gross income was, was at least 25,000, 65 or older, it goes up to the 27.3. And then if I go to married filing joint, uh, any age uh, at uh, five married filing separately at $5, that's because when you married filing separately, they're kind of concerned that you're gonna do some kind of strategic type of thing. So oftentimes the thresholds are quite different for married filing separately than single or married filing joint. And then you've got the head of household and so on. So I won't go, you can check out the charts in more detail if you so choose here or uh, on the IRS form 1040 instructions. Chart B for children and other dependents. So you can go through your worksheet there and then chart C other situations when you must file tip. So even if you uh, do not otherwise have to file a return, you should file one to get a refund of any federal income tax withheld. That's why I think going through these rules in a lot of detail to determine whether or not you should file is becoming a little bit more irrelevant, not because the rules don't still apply, but because filing is fairly easy to do and and with software. I mean, it's as, it's as easy to file possibly with the software as it is to, you know, look at these rules and try to take them off and you might get a benefit from filing even if you're not required to do so so it might be worth checking out so you should also file if you are eligible for any of the following credits so the earned income tax credit very kind of complicated credit uh so there's different resources to see whether or not you are you have access to it but i think the best resource to use is if you can get access to actual free software uh to check it out then run a run a projection if your income is fairly low, it should be fairly easy, hopefully, to do a projection and see if you would qualify for a credit. Additional child tax credit, another credit that could have a, like a refundable component to American Opportunity Credit. These are education credits that might have a refundable component to it, meaning even if your income is fairly low uh, and you're not subject to tax because you're under the standard deduction of taxable income, you might still get some benefit from the refundable parts of these credits. Credit for federal tax on fuels, premium tax credit, and credits for sick and family leave. Requirement to reconcile advance payments of the premium tax credit. If you or your spouse uh, with whom you are filing a joint return or a dependent was enrolled in coverage through the marketplace for 2022 and advance payments of the, of the premium tax credit were made, for this coverage, you must file a 2022 return and attach form 8962. So in other words, if your income is below a certain threshold, it's likely that that you might have participated in the in the marketplace for the health coverage, in which case the, the typical standard process would be that they would try to estimate what kind of credit you would get for it and lower your actual premiums by it, which means you already got the benefit of the lowered premiums. And therefore, even if your income is low, they're gonna want you to file the tax return so you can compare the benefit that you got in essence in a prepayment by lowering the insurance premiums to the credit calculated on the tax return. So once again, I'm thinking more and more these days, even on the low income side of things, uh, even if you're not required to file due to the income thresholds, it's kind of worthwhile to, to check out. You're going to be more and more kind of required to file when they have these kind of benefit programs uh, and refundable credits. And that's, I think, why they're trying to push to have the free software available because those kind of programs make the tax return quite difficult and require more people to file. So uh, you uh, or whoever enrolled you should have received a Form 1095A from the marketplace. So if you get that form, a 1095A, not a C, but an A. That's usually the indication that you're like, uh-oh, this is gonna be a little complicated with this health insurance marketplace credit type of thing. So, and that'll give you the information. So you must attach form 8962, even if someone else enrolled you, your spouse or your dependent. If you or a dependent who has claimed on someone else's 2022 return, uh, you do not have to attach form 8962. So exception for certain children under age 19 or full-time students. So now you, you, we're talking situations where you're saying, what if, what if I'm possibly subject to someone else, a dependent of someone else due to me being under 19 or possibly a full-time student? We'll talk about more dependent rules going in the future. But generally, when we look at the income tax, we're talking about these 
we said you might not have to file if your income is below a certain threshold and that threshold generally is tied to the the amounts of the standard deduction because everyone gets a standard deduction if your income is below the standard deduction you would think you wouldn't owe any tax but the standard deduction will change if you're claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return because you're under 19 and or you're a student and what it, what happens then if you have some income so uh, if certain conditions apply, you can elect to include on your return the income of a child who was under age 19 at the end of 2022 uh, or was a full-time student under age 24 at the end of 2022. So you might be able to report the income on uh, of the dependent on the tax return of, of generally the parent. So to do so, you can use Form 8814. If you make this election, your child doesn't have to file a return. So if the child had income, you're claiming them as a dependent because they're under 19 or go a full-time student under 24, then possibly you're using, if they had income, possibly claiming it on the parent's uh, tax returns and therefore the child wouldn't have to file. For details, you can use Tax Topic 553 or C Form 8814. A child born on January 1st, 1999 is considered to be age 24 at the end of 2022. So obviously, whenever we have these age things, we've got these cutoff dates to determine exactly when someone hits, you know, the 24, the 19 threshold. Do not use Form 8819 for such a child. So resident aliens. These rules also apply if you were a resident alien. Also, you may qualify for certain tax treaty benefits. So you can see publication 519 for details if that is applicable to you. Non-resident aliens and dual status aliens. These rules also apply if you were a non-resident alien or a dual status alien and both of the following apply. You were married to a U.S. citizen or resident alien at the end of 2022. You elected to be taxed as a resident alien. Caution. Specific rules apply to, uh, de apply to determine if you are a resident alien, non-resident alien, or dual status alien. So we got to get the correct categorization if that's uh, what we're applying here. Most non-resident aliens and dual status aliens have different filing requirements and may have to file form 1040NR. Publication 519 discusses these requirements and other information to help aliens comply with U.S. tax law.